the one thing and that I love about your work. You're so you think out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. How about um, how about Devon Morgan? <laughs> Okay, well, um, hi, I, Gene. Uh, my name is Devon Morgan. Howdy. Um, I am a voice actor myself. Ooh. And I've recently starred in Matthew's EP cartoons. Um, my first one being Dusk Interviews Devon. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty much going to start in more in the near future. Ooh, very um, cool. My question to you is that like when you, okay, hold on. when you um was like, did you do one of the voices for one of your cartoons, the recent one that we watched, the, like the first, the, like the first cartoon that we saw? Which cartoon? Oh, I mean, on, on on the cartoons you're seeing today, or or, or before or today? The ones that we saw. Today? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I, I didn't do any voices on these. Uh, they're uh, they're doing all the voices. In fact, I forgot to tell you on uh, uh, on Bubbles Troubles that scene uh, you guys seem to like, uh, where the uh, the bad dog sticking his head in the doghouse and the the good dog just sticks his head out. Uh, those two dogs are all voiced by the same guy. Ah! Wow. And, and uh, most people think it's two different voices. It's Kwame. His name is Kwame Ricks, and he's an amazing voice. Oh, one, one more thing was, uh, you know, when uh, uh, the big dog is trying to bite uh, uh, and you hear the bang, bang, bang really sound. Loud. Yeah. We make our own sound effects. So, so that sound effect was, uh, uh, I, I took a metal chair and I, uh, the, the, we had a, uh, a piece of uh, uh, tubing, uh, uh, PVC pipe, and it was bang, 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 bang. And that, that was, <laughs> oh my God. And uh, every once in a while, we come up with our own sound effects. Like uh, we, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, we we got. Uh, uh, I guess you didn't see this film, but uh, we we had one where this guy is is uh, uh, at, at Yosemite and he's climbing that that. The, oh, oh, can you can can you can you can you can you can you can you Taken for granted. Taken for granted. Taken for granted. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's called ta yeah, taken for granted. Taken for uh, granted. Uh, the guy, the guy's, the, the guy's putting his piton in there, and then the whole mountain just uh, crumbles from that one piton out from under him, and he falls. Uh, and uh, we were looking around for a mountain crumbling sound on, on the internet. And there, there wasn't any mountain crumbling sounds. So it turned out that uh, every other day I shared this room with an art teacher and she had uh, this box that looked like a, a popcorn box, a, a square popcorn box, it's plastic. And she kept all her scissors in there. And this uh, one of the guys who's assisting me as a teacher, he goes, shakes the thing against the microphone and it sounded like a mountain falling down. So we used it for that. <laughs> And then uh, we had another one called the Blam Canyon, where, where uh, uh, the, the, there's no echo in the Grand Canyon, so the forest ranger has to do, be the echo for anybody that yells something. Right. And, uh, and so, so uh, we uh, had the, uh, when one of the uh, guests is insulted and walking off in a huff, uh, we wanted to have dirt sound. Well, the only footsteps we could find was on, on uh, uh, linoleum you know here here an echoing down the hall and uh, we had a, a, a door that there's this little uh, burlap bag and uh, they're always using it to keep the door open and it tur turned out it had charcoal in it and it was the thing for uh, I guess sterilizing something and I picked the thing up and I went boom, 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 and it sounded like dirt uh, footsteps and dirt and and the other thing we, we had another one uh, uh, where uh, we had horses, and the old thing they used to do in radio was uh, they had coconut shells uh, to to make a sound like horses. We didn't have any coconut shells, but I remember there was a party like a week back uh, in the office, and uh, uh, they had these plastic champagne glasses. So I took the stems off and just had the bowls and went cloppity 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 clop, and then we lowered the pitch 
and it sounded like a horse's hooves. So uh, it's fun making up sound effects. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Kevin Ewing. Yeah, um, I really liked um, what you were doing on those cartoon films. I mm -hmm. think I think you really made it real uh, with the, the sound effects and, and things that you've been using. I loved that moment inside the plot of the of the cartoon thing mm -hmm. from um, um bubble troubles for mm -hmm. the ones yeah and then i got, and i found uh, uh found out about people doing the um the sound effects from from that and, and that made it much more real and now and, and, and wow and that's really um really amazing that you got into the um the, 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 what, what you got into a lot and, and i love that exactly what yeah. kevin said too when did you yeah. know you know when did you get into animation well me uh yeah well it was uh 1978 uh uh, I just got divorced and I thought, uh, uh, I was up in Oregon and I thought, uh, uh, <laughs> every, some, suddenly everything uh, uh, that I thought uh, in my life was just suddenly upended and I thought, I got nothing to lose, I'm going to head for uh, Los Angeles and <laughs> see if I can make it in cartoons. And I was lucky enough, uh, uh, the second week I was there, uh, they were, uh, it was just, just pure luck, they needed anybody who was breathing uh, at, at, uh, at, uh, Bakshi to finish Lord of the Rings on time. So, so I got in there and then, and that, that, that got me in. Now, what were you doing before animation? Uh, the, the closest I had to anything, if, if, if I worked in a film lab, uh, it's a, which, uh, uh, organizing film, uh, up in Portland, Oregon. The guy that did the California Raisins, he, he, he uh, had all these films processed there. So, uh, so that, that's the closest I came. I, 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 and I actually tried to get down to Hollywood three times. Mm. And the, 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 the third time was the charm. Um, right. Right. Persistence. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew Payne. You never give up. Uh, yeah. Um, so the designs of the characters in the movies that you've shown today, are they your students' designs, or do they sometimes give you an idea and you design I, I, characters? I, I, can, I, can have, I 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 can uh, we get uh, people in the past the thing uh, the when he when he gave us uh, bubble trouble uh, he he had uh, he had a good way your favorite can movie can movie yes uh so. So, uh, him and we so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, idea. And we had, uh, 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 we are all, we are Yeah, well, uh, uh, on Bubbles Troubles, I was still draw, drawing th and having them as assistants. But all, all these other films, uh, except for that one, uh, they're all drawing it all themselves. I'll, I'll, I'll tell them, they, yeah, you ought to you know, make, make that nose a little straighter or something. But they're, they're doing all the drawing and they're doing all the designing too. Now, do you treat, beside 
teaching the animation, uh, uh, screenwriting, or or what what are the different classes you teach? Well, uh, uh, I've been teaching. Uh, well, I, I I teach all kinds of stuff now, but uh, uh, yeah, I I, I like uh, I, I teach uh, voice acting, so I can I teach them how to uh, do voices because uh, I I learned from Dallas McKinnon, who did all the voices for the Archie cartoons, and and uh, he. he uh, so I learned all the tricks that he, he had told me. And so teach them that and then screenwriting, so come up, show them how to come up with an idea and then and how to how to stretch it out and make it work. And uh, then uh, then I'll show them how to draw. The other thing I'm, I'm doing now uh, is I noticed a lot of people, when they draw, they always draw from the front. Uh -huh. uh, and and uh, so I've got a class now where I'm drawing your character from every angle. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, drawing character from every angle. Then, can can say something on that? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, drawing from every angle that make that he 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 can write everything straight. He he want he wanted uh him to do it from a corner corner when he do. It. Corner, uh, corner, when you right thing, corner, corner, when you Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, uh, the thing is that I, I, uh, actually one of the bus drivers that I was like, why does everybody just draw from the front? And he, he says, that's because they're, they always see themselves in a the mirror. Because nobody, nobody's got a, you know, they got a mirror like this. Nobody's got a mirror like in a clothing store where you can see yourself from every angle. Right. And then, <laughs> but the funny thing is, uh, everybody's taking selfies. And they always take selfies like this. Nobody takes a selfie like this or this or this, so they can see the, well, all the way around. So, or the bottom uh, of their foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm, so I'm trying. I'm, I'm breaking them, uh, breaking them that habit, so they can start seeing the world three dimensionally. Uh, hey, uh, this is a, a question for Jared. Jared Kalb, right? Yeah. Uh, Jared, how many uh, productions have you worked on with Gene? Well, all right, all right. You know, you know, um, uh, you know, I can't, uh, I can't count them all, but I've, I've been, uh, I've been really having the, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, we, we, you could, yeah, it's, it's just in the ball go, and he was, uh, he was going to make a cartoon, and not only cartoon, he was a major movie uh, with, with other, other, uh, other, like, and, uh, and, um, can you hear know I me? Mean? Yeah, well, I think Jared's probably, probably 20 or 30 cartoons he's, he's helped me out on. This is Jared, Jared, I call Jared my right hand man. There's a, uh, because we we're always doing something technical on the computer and, and I'm always uh, uh, running into some technical problem where I'm swearing a blue streak. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and oh, we Jared, all get into those moods, don't yeah, we? Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, and Jared, uh, even, even when I'm not, or even when he isn't here, when I'm home, I still hear this voice, sounds just like Jared saying, look it up on YouTube, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it, Jared always helped me find the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Austin Vance. Hi, I'm uh, Austin Vance, and I'm an uh, animator as well. Cool. And I got a question. What is your What is your favorite part of the whole animation process? Well, uh, probably thinking up the idea uh, when you're actually drawing it. That's the that's where the work comes in, but thinking up the idea is the fun, real real fun part. And uh, but uh, the th the thing is the way the way the, the the your brain works. There's a left left brain and a right brain, and there's a rational brain and there's a the the little kid kind of brain, the the right side of the brain. And uh, I I think I'm more right brain than than left brain. I'm not logical. So so right brain people are good at starting a project and terrible at finishing it. Left brain people are terrible at starting a project, but great at finishing it. So uh, 
uh, not too many people are balanced. <laughs> but uh, so I, 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 I'm good at starting a project and then I have to just work at it to finish it. So, you know, I, I have a couple of things. I mean, you wrote a book, how to, how to get a job in animation and keep it. And, yeah. And then you also uh, have this film created equal the art and artist about the band. Yeah, that's that's the documentary. Uh, uh, it, it's you can see it on, on uh, gumroad.com. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Julie Newmar narrated uh, created equal uh, the art and artist of Alchemia. It focuses on four uh, artists uh, of Alchemia, and uh, uh, oh, the other thing with Julie is that. Uh, for the one of the, one of the breakthroughs we had was uh, Julie, uh, her son uh, John, has been having birthday parties at the United Cerebral Palsy Center in, in Culver City, and uh, so he uh, uh, every year uh, until this pandemic started, came along, uh, for the what, five five six years we we've been uh, we've been doing uh, uh, she she sends up the raw footage like about four hours of footage, right. and these these guys. Uh, they, they, we look at it and we boil it down to about three minutes. And these guys are getting to be really good editors. They, yeah, you can lose that star part. Yeah, they, we, they get it cut down. To, they're really good editors now. They, That's know, amazing. they know how to drag and drop and, and uh, where, to, uh, where to cut, and, you know. Well, it's an art to take four hours of footage and make it into three minutes. Yeah, yeah. These, these guys have been doing it for about five years. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen a couple of those too. I've seen a couple of her birthday parties, and I went, "Ah, oh, that's Jean's edit," <laughs> you know, and Alchemia. Yeah. yeah, these these guys are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, did it? Did uh, was there any other one more thing that you wanted oh, to? Uh, can I can I show a couple of films? I, I we got two two more. Oh, sure, stuff. sure. Whatever uh, you like. All right, let me see if I, uh, let me share a screen. Uh, oh, actually, let me load it up here so I don't have too much dead air. And you know why you're loading up? The, I'm going to throw out a name to you, which I saw on your site. Okay. Pickle Puss. Oh, Pickle Puss, yeah, that's a, <laughs> Pickle Puss, uh, I haven't done anything on Pickle Puss for a little while, but uh, Pickle Puss, uh, every Wednesday I was coming up with a new Pickle Puss cartoon. He's basically based on my uh, stand-up comedy r uh, routines and so I, I would give him a, a one-liner once a week, and uh, he's a he's a uh, sarcastic cat who just kind of has my voice. Uh, I love it. So let's see. Oh, let's. Uh, this is full screen. So uh, here's share screen. This is called the Hokey Pokey Hotline. Oh, oh, oh I love this one. Uh, oh, you've seen this one? <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, I see this one I too. I, I love this one. Yeah, uh, I it's really funny. Hokey Pokey Hotline. I'm having trouble with my Hokey Pokey. What's the trouble, sir? I don't know my Hokey from my Pokey. Can you walk me through it? Yes, I can walk you through it. Now put your left foot in. What? Put your left foot in, sir. Your left foot. Are you putting your left foot in, sir? Yes, I am. Take your left foot out. Did you take your left foot out, sir? Yes, I did. Now put your left foot back in. Okay, okay. And shake it all about. Did you put your left foot in, sir? Yes, I did. Are you shaking it all about? Now put your right foot in. What happened, sir? I was still shaking my left foot. And then you said, put my right foot in. I had both feet in the air. I'm sorry, sir. I should have told you to take your left foot out first. That's okay. Is your left foot out? Yes, it is. Now put your right foot in. Now put your left foot in. Okay. Do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. 
I should have specified. I meant keep your feet on the floor when you turn yourself around. Let's try it again. No thanks to help me up for Randy. My back can't stand any more help. You're welcome, sir. Call back any time. The Hokey Pokey Hotline? That's what we're all about. <laughs> <laughs> Kimberly did the voice on that one. Uh, the one thing I forgot to, uh, on back on Bubbles Troubles, the the old lady that owns the dog, that was Sophia, the the the, the girl that uh, wrote the wrote the thing. She she did the voice of the old lady. Love it. Uh, oh. And uh, let let me show one more. In the, uh, so you you do you have different writers for all the films? I these I've been writing. Uh, the, the, uh, They'll, they'll, they'll throw in a joke here every once in a while, but sometimes it's a little, uh, if, we, if we have to wait to get an idea, we'll be waiting for a while, so, so <laughs> just keep it going, and then, then, we'll, then we have something for everybody to draw. Uh, so uh, let's see, we'll, we'll get that big, and then, uh, am I still sharing screen, or do I have to do Not it? Not yet. Okay, let me try, uh, wait a minute here, oops. Where did where did my there it is. With Roper here, we're at the Senate. They are about to repeal the law of gravity. Speakers calling the meeting to order. Let's take you to the floor right now. Knock that floor. The chair recognizes the senator from Alabama. Mr. Speaker, I propose we repeal the law of gravity. It's holding back business. That's the stupidest idea I ever heard. I second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Are you kidding me? All opposed, say nay. Nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. What? The Senate has just repealed the law of gravity. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something's happening on the floor. Senators are floating up in the air. It's unbelievable. Oh, no. They're headed for the CLA. Oh, no. They're crashing through the CLA. They're floating up in the sky. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This just in. People all over America are floating into space. It's Wolfer, on location in space. Senator, how can you voice this bad idea on the American people? I may voice it, but they second it. Mr. Speaker, I propose we reinstate the law of gravity. Aye. 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 What's Wolfer here? The Senate and everyone in America are plummeting toward the Earth. Amendment! Amendment! I hope you learned your lesson. The Speaker, I propose we repeal the second law of thermodynamics. It's holding back business. What?